Jesus, Jesus is asking us to love, 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 and love even our enemy. But how, how, how is it possible to love our enemy? Some contemplation. There is a story of a person who betrayed Christ, and his name is Judas. But some contemplation is this, that one day Jesus called the twelve disciples, including Judas also, and twelve disciples, and Jesus gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. Now you imagine these twelve people goes to the homes of so many people and do this work in their life, this charity, this good work in their life. And there is one more occasion when we find when John the Baptist is still alive that time we know that disciples of Jesus were baptizing people. And also one more occasion I want to draw, draw our attention that when Jesus goes to the home of Lazarus and Mary is oiling the feet of Christ, that time too Judas, Judas is welcome there. They welcome Judas there. And also there are so many people who could not be present at the time when Jesus was getting crucified. Even Peter was not present according to, we don't have any uh, mention of Peter at the time of the cross. And Jesus, we know Jesus from the other side of the cross when Jesus is resurrected, when Jesus has ascended to the Father. But there is a story from other side of the cross when Jesus is still living and last day has last supper has not yet happened and everybody who loves Jesus, Jesus says that who loves me will love people whom I send and Jesus has sent Judas into home of many people. So they all knew all these apostles as the hand of Jesus, as the love of Jesus, as the representative of Jesus. And there is one story of a person who was who has seen the little baby Jesus and he cried because he was unable to see when Jesus grows up and he was a man of devotion. We have his name mentioned in the scripture. So we know that there are so many people who could not see this end, this last supper. So in their heart, these twelve apostles were the representative of Christ, if they would think that they would feel love for Judas also, as we feel love for Peter, as we feel love for this, they will not know that Judas has betrayed Jesus. Judas has sold the life of Jesus for 30 silver coins. Judas has been instrumental in crucif crucifying Jesus. So there is a letter from other side. It is imaginative later. You can see that it is can be a form of a poetry. Not real, not from any scripture. I mention it again and again. But from other side of from who like somebody who would have seen this companion of Christ. If that person, if, 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 not real, if, writes a letter to Judas, how would he like write? And there imagine there is some person who feel that who get to know that Jesus get crucified and they knew that like Je Jesus has healed so many people has done good in so many lives his ministry was a ministry of grace and so many people who had seen Judas Peter Thomas etc with Jesus Christ and get to know that Jesus is crucified and they would get this news yes Jesus is crucified the Christ is crucified and they will say yes 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 and then somebody would ask that what what has happened how and they would say that Judas one of the apostles one of the disciple of Christ has betrayed Christ and they would not believe it and probably somebody from there I'm imagining it or you can say that it is just a poetry not a real scripture that how if we are there how would we write a letter to to Judas. So this is this letter and the letter starts with this. My friend Judas, O companion of Christ, what's all these stories we are hearing, all these incidents that has happened, we hear that you have become a traitor. And then the person who is writing the letter is a person who loves Christ, who loves everything about the Christ. You know people who loved Christ were so much in love of Christ that we have a story of a woman 
who knew that if she could touch even the hem of the garment of Christ, she would be saved. So there were so many people who used to feel that they, if they would meet even one of the apostles of the Christ, they would meet Jesus. Can you imagine if we meet Thomas in real? If we have met Peter in real, how would we feel? So those people would have been feeling so good about all the twelve disciples and they would feel them as the blessing of the Christ and this person who is writing the letter could be writing this way that the blessing has become the curse. How come? No, it's impossible that the grace of God that you are has become a curse. Only God knows what's the significance of this story is that you have become a traitor. And then the person who is writing the letter is writing, Oh beloved heart and soul of Christ, Oh you, the companion of Christ, just if you would have asked him for even one time, Jesus himself would have given or laid down his life for you. Because we know that Judas has sold life of Jesus Christ for 30 silver coin. And he did not need to sell life of Christ according to the person who is lover of Christ is writing later to Jesus. Because this person knows that Jesus is a lover and Jesus knows that there is no love greater than this. That a person who loves give, lay down his life for his friend and Jesus has made these dual people like his friend. And Jesus himself said later on that you are, I don't call you servant to Peter and others. Jesus was telling that you are my friend. So Judas could be the friend of Christ and would have asked him for his life and Jesus would have given the life himself and the later person who's writing later to Judas is asking Judas that if you would have asked even for one time Jesus himself would have laid down his life for you feeling that all the depth of this friendship for the service that you have done for Christ is fulfilled because Jesus is the fulfillment and the person who's writing the letter is asking Judas that then what the need of betraying him and we also know from the gospel that Jesus has made Judas as the tray he used to keep the treasure when Mary is oiling the feet of Jesus we know that Judas was keeping the money and other occasion also we know that he was keeping money Jesus himself would have given all the money why this just 30 silver coin and this person who's writing the letter to Judas is writing Oh, beloved of Jesus, this heartbreak is not less than the last day of that catastrophe of the judgment day. Because when we are separated from our beloved, then it feels that even if everything is in the world is as it is, but it feels to us that everything has ended. Nothing, nothing, nothing appears meaningful. You know, this evening, this sunrise, these are so beautiful, but when we don't have our loved one with us, then everything appears meaningless. A person who loves a child and the child is no longer in the Christmas time, then we feel heartbreak. So many people feel Christmas as a celebration and so many people who don't have loved one feel such yearning, such longing at the Christmas time. So it happens that when somebody whom we love breaks up with us, then the things that we enjoyed earlier appears meaningless. So this person who is writing the letter to Judas is writing, Oh beloved of Jesus, this heartbreak is not less than the last day or the judgment day that the shepherd and his sheep has separated. That you, like in love, what is the aim of love? What is the beautiful aim of love? That you and I, don't remain as just you and I. This wall of you and I fall down and you and I become we. When we become we, then this love has won. That's why Jesus, I'm not saying that's why, but we, have, we know that Jesus is saying that when two and three or more come together in his name, there Jesus is. Like when we are together, then there is no you and I. There is no ego. The wall fall down and the bridge of love gets established between us. And this I and you of the beloved, when become as we, then it becomes a family. 
it becomes home and Jesus the dream of Jesus Christ is this that he is a good shepherd and he wants that one shepherd and one flock all people come together and Jesus always says that it is a celebration when a lost sheep is found so oh, writing the later person who's writing later is writing oh beloved companion of Jesus you got separated so please oh companion of Christ what is this story that you have become traitor tell me but this person who's writing the letter is perhaps not aware that Judas is no longer there to reply to this person because Judas when get to know that Jesus was about to be crucified he the 30 coins that he gained for this work he threw that 30 coins and went away and we know that Judas hanged himself to death and such was the pain in him when he betrayed to Christ so it is it, it is a mystery it is sadness that Jesus nothing would give Jesus greater joy than this that a ship that is lost he finds back and Jesus said that when a shepherd finds the lost ship he live by 99 that he has found and he celebrate for the one that he has found and Jesus would have left behind the 11 apostles and go to Judas that he has found Jesus but Judas was not found he was left alone and it is sad this story is very sad that what has happened it is the mystery it is one of the greatest mysteries so one contemplation because when but one thing that we find that how Jesus kept on loving everybody no matter what has happened in his life we see that Jesus loved so even when our heart breaks when we also get betrayed then we can still love following Jesus and it rather instead of feeling anger for the person who has betrayed us we can feel pity, we can feel compassion for the person whom we love so much doesn't want to be with us anymore. We can feel love for that person and in this way we can love our enemy. There are so many people who are living for war in this world. There are so many people who are living for crime in this world. There are so many people who are living unjust life. We can feel pity for them, we can feel compassion for them, that they are doing suicide, that living behind Christ, living behind compassion, living behind love, living behind this togetherness, living behind the world of glory of God. They are living a life of all sadness. So we can love them as Jesus would love, feeling compassion, because we find that Jesus knew about Judas always. But Jesus allowed Judas to come so close to him that he accompanied until the Last Supper. And also, Judas comes to kiss Jesus. So, we feel we can love our enemy. Judas was always enemy. He could not transform into friend again. He couldn't come back to flock again. His heart couldn't change. We know that Peter also denied Jesus, but Peter comes back to Jesus. Peter really becomes the rock, but Judas couldn't come back. So Peter is the friend who gets separated but gets united again. And Judas is a friend who gets separated and never gets united again, at least as far as we can see from our visual perspective. So those people who separate from you never do unite in you is enemy form of metaphor and we can feel compassion for those people because they are doing suicide when they have turned away from the love but there are people like Peter also who also denied Jesus three times that they don't know Jesus and we have our love life in which people deny us but they are never going to be away from you forever they really comes back to you and they are the friend and Jesus has said love both love Peter and love Judas both so with the prayer for love and care and dream still be fulfilled in your life because you are with the Christ with you are with the glory you are the beauty of of your life I thank you for listening to these words with so much of love may God bless you